everyone welcome back to the channel so i had a request from the youtube comments to do a specific blender bmw benchmark they actually don't host this on the website so i had to get it from searching online and i think i got the right version because it looks what i've seen <laughs> up on previous videos anyways set the metal tracing on both of these devices and you can see by the windows taskbar that this one um the rtx 4080 mobile laptop on the Legion 7 Pro finished in about six seconds. And the um, MacBook finished in 19 seconds. So that was with the experimental metal ray tracing on. Um, so in this video, wherever you hear the iPhone camera, it's because I wanted to call out specifically how loud the Legion laptop gets. Now in this particular uh, video, I wanted to address what I made yesterday was a I called object tracking what it actually is is a person tracker it's a way to do like rotoscope I believe is a technical term or making masks that track so specifically um, to do object tracker then if you go into the fusion tab you could add this um, if you're not familiar with resolve there's like a tab where you could do a lot of different things um, so in the fusion tab there is a specifically a tracker methodology that you could add and pointing out like what I'm actually tracking. I'm trying to track my, my ear. And when we track it, you, I started on the RTX actually like in this particular run, um, which was unfortunate. It ended up tracking my arm, which was not correct. Now I'm not going to say that, you know, RTX versus M3 has a different tracking method. This is just things that happen in your day to day. Um, so in, in this particular run, you could hear, um, I think the iPhone uses different uh, microphones, but it ended up kind of getting kind of loud, but they did both finish at pretty respectable times. Um, so then we rerun the RTX machine running 4080 laptop, and this time I believe it tracks my ear pretty well. So rerunning the test on the Windows laptop, we get the 30 frames per second and double checking that it did check my ear. Whereas if we look back in the video, roll the tapes back, it was 35 seconds on the MacBook. I did want to call out that Final Cut Pro, as you can see here, runs a type of tracking, object tracking, pretty fast actually. Um, so it could be some optimization things or just different methodology and math to do it. But basically when you go into your timeline and you add an object tracker, you just simply select it and then track on a plane or image so the actual use case of this of why people track things is you may have seen videos where things the camera tilts and there's a title or something tracking i'm showing a rudimentary case but basically once you add a title um, or really you can add anything you could then do the tracking based on the position that it tracks or even the rotation if you want as you you were panning the camera and kind of showing that kind of simplified input here is once you drag it on and you select the correct object track, the title should follow along. And it does, it's kind of hard to see on the screen, um, but you can see there, there's the title as I zoomed in. It went away because I believe of the rotation, but playing it back, you see that um, it's kind of following my head movement in the beginning of this uh, video clip. So yeah, um, now I believe that what I just showed the first time was point tracking and Resolve does have a different form of tracking, which I find to be kind of faster. It's called planar tracking. So I run this test um, with DaVinci Resolve on the RTX and it goes pretty smoothly, actually probably just as fast um, on the RTX. Um, basically what happens is it shows you kind of like these green lines moving. Um, so that's what it does. So we could do the same exact workflow and setup as Resolve as it's pretty much one-to-one -one matching of a Windows version versus the Mac OS. You add the planar tracking, you set up the kind of square box um, around my head, which I did in the Windows version. Um, and then this is it kind of running real time, tracking my head. Um, so every time the frame moves, it's tracked that perspective. But I do actually indicate um, frames per second on the bottom and here we see 44 frames per second where it was able to track it finished in 18 seconds we're going back panning over to the windows it was 64 frames per second checking at 11.9 seconds so basically 12 seconds um, so that's the difference pretty respectable i'd expect m uh what's it called an m3 max probably to match this in terms of the 480 
I'm not exactly sure if the M3 Max would do so well in kind of what I'll f uh, frame this as magic masking, auto tracking, or rotoscoping, um, I believe it's called. Uh, but yeah, I showed this in the last video and just wanted to touch back on it um, that I still am getting basically the same results that I showcased yesterday. So for this in the workflow, you simply drag, um, you you have a stroke basically, and you stroke on the thing you want to do. So in this case, it's my body. You could click some buttons to see what's tracking. You could you could theoretically remove myself from this video, um, or if you wanted to remove the background, track yourself over it. Um, and it's the same workflow in M3 Pro, doing a stroke, um, going over my body, and then. Um, probably believe it uses ML neural engine, but it probably uses the GPU. I think there could be an opportunity for Resolve to see how either using the neural engine um, could make this faster on the uh, M3 Pro MacBooks or, or any I Apple Silicon laptop device. So yeah, as we're seeing, you know, RTX laptop on the right ran it, runs it through and the uh, M3 Pro I wish there was like some kind of performance setting, like it showed with the planner tracker of how many frames per second it's doing, but it doesn't actually uh, showcase that. Um, but yeah, finish through, scrub through, you can see it tracks my body throughout this uh, like 10 second clip. And the uh, the blue bar is the progress bar of how it's making. So depending on where you're on the timeline, we go forward then backwards, but I usually just for tracking purposes, like starting of the beginning of the clip of what I'm gonna track, so yeah, the M3 Pro, I would estimate, probably takes around a minute, while this one takes 10 seconds on the RTX laptop. And um, yeah, it's actually <laughs> half fast that you're seeing me in live time, rerunning the thing, deleting it, adding a track, and reanalyzing um, faster than the M3 Pro ran its first cycle. And I guess, suppose the only thing I wanna call out by leaving the audio you could hear me breathing is uh, right there right now you could hear the fan spinning up so that's kind of for some people the trade-off of the device and of course some people want to see this they like knowing how it performs the, the m3 pro in this whole time hasn't been plugged in by the way there's no difference if you plug in or don't plug in um, from my perspective or, or maybe some other youtuber will, will test like the actual results um but yeah i'll say like a benefit of having a macbook is you get consistent performance on the rtx a lot of times i get slowdowns i've made videos on this where you have to either change the performance settings in Len lenovo vantage but yeah it does kind of run slower you could see that the rtx machine was tracking it slower unplugged where the um, M3 Pro kind of did it at its own pace. So that's my take, plugged, unplugged, quick little test there. Um, yeah, both of these devices go for around 2,500 and depending on where you can get deals, be sure to find them. Um, but yeah, my take on another follow-up to what I did yesterday. Um, it wasn't exactly object tracking, so I showed object tracking. Hope you guys enjoyed this video. Likes, comments, and subscribes help. Um, maybe I could get to 3,000 subs this year. See you guys in the next one. Peace.